sometimes people politics. Everything must have a government in Yambe. You don't have a toilet in government in Yambe. Most of the over the Mufred government in Yambe. So Mufred should come and tell you to not put rubbish in a Mufred. He built that thing. You're the one clogging it with Buveda government in Yambe. Why? Because he's that. Everything goes back to in a home. A home is like a government. Ori Chiambi. Every time you wear a man's shoes, but you want to talk to the school fees. Run for us to the Numba. Run for you to go to the Mary or wait there. We are going to talk about every corner because the Baba Musa Jamuni. Now I'm asking the men, where do you get the B A L L's <laughs> to say you're a man? We must be a police or a police. And then this is how the some married women get comfortable and throw it on you, the singles. <laughs> they are bitter, sweetheart. Enjoy your singleness. This is the thing you can never be. There is one thing marriage can never give you identity. Mm. Mm. If you are dying to carry a man's name, don't you have a father? Call yourself a father's name. <laughs> 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 it's not the same. <laughs> Mark my words. You're running your own race. There are very many married women, like she said, who are wishing to. They're not wishing to be single. They are slapping themselves for the rush mm -hmm. because they decided to listen to society. Why you have a sumba go ba ba na bobo vuka kaputi because simu fun. The magamba muwa na chafuni oluguto. You find a Christian girl running to me, Gloria. Mukama nzisi. Ata akuta jango chando de maso mo gele njiri mfu. I had an abortion yesterday. I'm like, now why are you here? Why come when you've already done what? I thought you should have called me before. Mm -hmm. She's like, no. Simu kodi da kuaya. Now she feared the human being who breathes, pukes like me, and doesn't even like me, and didn't fear God. If they are chasing you out of your church, go away. Go to another church, church in pity room. Make your own church at home. But don't go against God because you're scared of what another human being is gonna say. But who is to blame? I think it starts with you as an individual. Are you reading your Bible? Unfortunately, not all of us have the strength. Unfortunately, not all of us have the strength. Not all of us have the strength. And the majority of us don't have the strength to stand by ourselves. This is happening in the church. Chiri wano, ava sum, baba rebuking ava nawe kukatuti. You go to a pastor confide in him, and next thing you hear, you go. Omo na naga mazesi cha sarwa. Why? She gives you her reasons. And because then you battle with somebody's spirituality, which is wrong. I'm not supposed to be battling with your spirituality. You're supposed to be relating with God calmly, because the Holy Spirit is calm. God is speaking in a year, you're gonna go because another human being in church rebuked her. Which is wives, take your place as a wife. I repeat, take your place as a wife. The singles marry, pray for your husband now. I totally get it. But this is one thing you're gonna benefit. Mugenda genda wano mchachi musabe. Buri omu shabarangai mukamari kashete. Lelo basu. Wowe woyo mukamandega mumsa janga ina njala wezi siwa tinga chaka tona ngo amukuba dempi ya chere ilamu shibi 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 shibi. Wabayo na gamba God I want in a man. Na he give me a man. Wamu wakafuru maari muli nze tax. In a man in a tuka. For you who say a detailed prayer. You're going to turn and say. That's not what I ask my God. You're sick at home. Then this one you say in a man. You're raising your butt to high. Those words are not godly. There's nothing like praising your butt to high. The Bible told us whatever you ask for. But how do you tell me my buy is too high? When I say my buy is too high, I don't mean I want a man who drives a Lamborghini. I mean I want a man who will never let me sleep hungry. And you said, do not marry out of love. And everyone, yeah, I've heard it. So, hmm. why do we get? Why should we get? What are those reasons? Do you think one should consider getting married? Let me explain it like this. These words of I cannot live without you. I said they are not godly. The hardest thing in this life is living with someone. Me, I love my space and I'm a perfectionist. 
So live with another human being has been what they call sacrifice. <laughs> oh Jesus, I want to do things like this. <laughs> the way you have done my things like that. I want my shoes facing a certain way. Don't put one shoe then the other and it's like this. Put them the way they are. Living with somebody is very hard. You have got to make sure you can live with this person. What? Makes up that loyalty. Try. If you got married and you've never been tried, I'm sorry. You can never know the strength of a tea bag until you try it in water. So you can never know your deal breaker until the deal breaker hits you. You will never know. You will never know. There are women who have been beaten because it's their fault. Gloria, nothing I can do can ever be my fault. Again, again, I say it's not your fault. It is your fault. These are things people don't want to say. You provoke him in a bad way. You don't lay. You don't lay a hand on a man. You don't do that. Culture. We want to go digital. Marriage will die analog. Toast to Mukono, no put up Musaja. Nato Musaja, Wakuba, a Jacoba Sajas, and a Zob Saja. I'm not saying it is right, I'm saying it will happen that way. That is how everybody, even God, is going to understand it like that. I am assuring you. Me, yeah, I think everything should be simple. Uh, Why should I even rise? Yes, of course you're not. You're you're provoking this guy. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing things the right way, why should a guy even try to be? Our tolerance levels are not the same. Yeah. And then when it comes to principles, everyone has principles. I will say I can't go beyond this, and I will not. I swear. It is okay. You know, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and then you come up with something like everyone has principles. True. True, 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 true. So at the end of that day, for me, I think or not, I believe people can get married and stay there. Yes, and I also many. believe I don't judge anybody who has left their marriages because you were not in their shoes. You don't know what they went through. Very true. You don't know what is happening. Mm. Find yourself. Sure. Find yourself. Appreciate yourself and capitalize on your strength. Mm. You know. And also understand that you have flaws, and then you know appreciate the people that come out to talk to you about some of these things. Don't always take offense. I have no reason to come against you, Maureen. But if I call you and I say, "But Maureen, you see this thing? Eh? I've had people this and this, but I and I've also seen it here and here. You know, maybe okay. Let me. I'm just using Maureen because she's my friend. I'll just say anything, and she will not take offense. Maybe I've seen some ladies come to church and they are really dressed in a weird way. And you know they don't know their figure. <laughs> My God, <laughs> me, I would rather if I know. There, there's a one beautiful girl I know in church. One beautiful girl. She's so beautiful, you know? And she always, but when did she came in this jumpsuit? So I'm wearing a jumpsuit. <laughs> but you know, I just I just realized that day she really had a bad figure. Because it was <laughs> oh, all over her you know, every day I see her face mm. and then you know the round dresses and what but that day she came to church and I was like, ha ah. <laughs> and then you'd see the cellulite, you'd see everything you'd see and I'm and you know, we just need to know who we are, what is good for us and also let nobody put you down. Just just understand the right thing, the right thing to do. Some people are shouting because everyone is shouting. Mm. Some people are screaming because everyone is Some screaming. Those, you know, men also. I don't want to go into politics and what. Some people don't even pray about the things. Just because everyone is writing this, you also go and write, yeah, yeah, yeah. My God, have you been prayed about it? When, when was the last time you spoke to God and you felt like God spoke to me in this dream? Mm -hmm. Or God spoke to me through that young person? Or God, you just live a life following and coming to church every Sunday. You know? For me, I have a problem, especially with people who call themselves born again. Let something happen and I know that person is crazy, they are doing what? I'm like, okay, I totally understand. But my praise, apparently really, the, the way you have been, you know, whatever, scripture. and it's really, 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 read your Bible. So it is hurting. <laughs> the, to know, the things are like, uh, uh, girls in church, eh? they can leave church and go marry. There's, but there's who, some, I don't know what happened to this girl. <laughs> there's a church I was in, he dated this girl. We all liked that girl, she was really, by that day, he broke up with this girl. He was like, I'd rather marry even from 
like a Muslim family or what, but not a church girl. I don't know what that girl did to him. No. I don't know what he did, but I know that there's something that she did that was unforgivable. And he was like, you know, our brother go to, to the street and pick a prostitute oh. than marry someone from the church. Christian. Those were his words, you know? And I felt like, oh, God, forgive us. Now, oh. lastly, yeah. I'll point out something. And because me, I'm from this church. Mm -hmm. I've been here for a while. <laughs> and, I, and people will fear to, to approach you. By the way, we are approachable, you know? And you don't use us. Some people out there use us. True. What should I get? But even so Jesus and was like you that. Look, yes, you look, at, <laughs> you look at people. People are paying to get information from you, to understand some things. But because someone looks at you and they take you for granted, mm -hmm. you're always there, huh? mm -hmm. helping people from outside. And the, I, I, I'll never forget that day. Jessica Kayanja invited me. I was sharing a pulpit with um, who? Semati Bar, whatever, whatever, whatever. So I was seated right there, and I was seated next to this lady. And I tried to be friends with her. Like, Hi. And she was like, you know the thing of that's what I was asking about. That was. And I tried to be friends. That's what I was asking about. So what happened? Um, wow. And then just like, her up there, and she says, "I'm going to invite this lady. I love her. I've seen her. I'm humbled. I am. I didn't even know she was inviting me because <laughs> the introduction yeah. was too much. I relax. <laughs> and you know, she says, purity come up, and I go. <laughs> when so you came looks back, at, looked at, at your friend. Ah! Uh, what? <laughs> you, what you have to first know? You send that that just, yeah. We are not humble. God will send you True. an angel one and day you miss the message. and you trash that person. Yeah, you know. And you know, I used to, I used to tell her, I'm busy. You're going to call that number, and someone else is going like to pick someone it. is going to pick it, or to not be available. Because why do you want to be friends when you know that I have something? Yeah. They want you something know? from you. Because you are an opportunist. You just want something from me. You want to start, at, you know? So, banana, to be ever look for ever dara. So for me, that's what I'm saying. But that is my point. But sometimes you just have to be smart. Why are you sleeping around with guys when you're born again? Why is that? In the same place? Mm. What is then that? You are dating and you're sneaking around. You need to get born again, again. You need blessings, and then the following day you're pregnant. Of course, that people are going to judge you. I will understand. But not everybody is going to understand. Mm. But why in the first place are you sleeping around? This guy will be like, okay, if she slept with me before I even, you know, like went deeper, she will do the same when I marry her. They will leave you with a child, you start suffering. There are things we can avoid. We can all have, <laughs> live happily. Somehow we can, because we have God. And with him, everything is possible. For me, that is, that is what I believe in. Um. Yeah, you, you, you lead an organization, becoming a better you, purity, queer and I, the other things. My question is about um, living your dreams mm. and um, actually pursuing your dreams. Spirit, you just said, I woke up one day, I was like, I've been doing these small dinners, like, why not? How do you actually... Your purpose? Uh huh. Yeah. How do you discover? How do you get? To, how did you actually? How did you get in that place? Like, how do you? I've struggled <laughs> to know my purpose. There's a time I was so so frustrated with uh, my my pastors. Uh, God has given me an opportunity to spend some time with my pastors. So the other day I was with the two of them, and I was so frustrated that I think they also and they tried to encourage me to encourage me, but I think they were somehow discouraged by the person they were encouraging because I think I sounded so hopeless. It's some time back and it was uh, so frustrated but okay my pastor told me that the, uh, okay you're not in a bad place because in the first place you're even bothered about finding your calling and yeah some people don't have a problem not finding one ever. So I was like okay but it was really frustrating me and hopefully I, I'll, I get there. So how did you yeah, discover your purpose. Do you actually know it now? How do you get in that place? Like a purity that dinner I came to. How do you get in that place? Like, really? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm representing people here. I'm asking these questions on behalf of all of us. Um, my mom prayed to have a baby girl. Mm. She had two girls and, um, and a boy in her previous marriage. So when she met my dad, 
yeah, these other children, yeah. but whatever. So she had boy, a boy and a boy, and she was like, ah, ah. I don't want more than six children. And on um said you manage that. Now you come zani de yaka nakati. Akawala. So my, my family was Catholic. A few of us have gotten born again. My mom is still Catholic though. We're a work in progress. So she prayed a novena. The Catholics, if you think mm. that's the history, you know, she mm. prayed a novena to have a baby girl mm. for nine months before she could conceive. Mm. Those days there were no things in Muskanya, <laughs> Kamala get you the ones. So when she went to Zambia hospital and she gave back to me, mom it was really big and I was so small. I was so I was two point one. Mm. This tiny. So the doctors were like, eh, a very big woman like this, you give back to this cat thing. She just said, Moana. <laughs> <laughs> and they said Moana Moala. She was like, Oh, Jirabucha Mari. Her prayer was answered. My childhood I was a sickly child. Fast forward. How going back to purpose. She always used to tell me I was loved. My mom has loved me obscenely. Oh. It is it is abnormal by the way. It is very abnormal. If you found me with my mom, you would think, okay, she looks old, she's this one's mother. Why are they like this? We have the stupidest conversation. She's like a friend, not even a sister. No. She's my friend. We can say anything. She knew my first boyfriend when I broke my virginity. As in those <laughs> Weird things. She knew it. Be like so she has always carried me like Chino Chirabo. Mm. This is God answered my prayer. I'm a, she's a gift. But then, unfortunately, I was such a stubborn child. Jesus, I was stubborn. Yeah. You were so much loved, and how did you then get in that place? My mom was working for a very big company. She worked for the government for a while. They went into. She was a single mother. Mm. From government, she went into private sectors, and her job was very demanding, very, very demanding. With six children, we all went to good schools, we've never lacked. She didn't give us too much, but she gave us everything we needed. She provided and forgot the nurturing part. You understand what I say, wife, take yeah. your place? Because she had to stand in the feet of the provision. Yeah. So she had, she leaves uh, very early, 6 a.m., and comes back 6 p.m. 6 p.m., she was always home, on the door. She never went to bars or anything, but she drank. I learned how to drink from home. I learned how to drink in P3. And because I was her favorite when mm. she's drinking, <laughs> and then when she's clocked out, eh, and there's more left, she laughs. <laughs> so it took a while, and I was. In my spirit, I was in a dark place, but nobody saw it because I was a loner. Up to today, I don't like being around people for so long. After a while, I feel like you're making noise. <laughs> but it's a side effect of certain things. <laughs> Those are things I'm dealing with. I'll be okay, don't worry. There's nothing wrong with me. It's process. <laughs> but um, with all these things from the drinking, I went to school. I was a very smart child. I read, I read anything. I can read a book in four hours. I, and I make my mind. God has been placing things in my life, but I didn't know why. Mm. So the devil derails me. I did drugs. I did cocaine. I did weed. I've been imprisoned. Oh, I used to be a fighter. Jesus. Then I would end a bar. These things. I'm wearing my expensive shoe, and you step me, Jesus. A bad fight. I've replaced windows in clubs. I've done oh, All those things I've done. But. <laughs> I didn't know what was wrong with me. Because everybody, she's the sweetest little thing. I have this very innocent look before you piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I would never understand. I thought she had never seen the side of me. I would be like, But the truth is, she, had, she wasn't lying. She had never seen that side of me. The teacher would come and tell me, and I bought the same. We are going to suspend you, please. <laughs> and when they suspend me, I go home and I said, the teacher backed at me. That was enough for my mother to change my school. They don't ever go in a one way. And she would come and defend. <laughs> she wasn't even there. But because I am hard. So I used to take advantage of all, all these things. So I get to campus. She tells me what cost do you want to perform well. I'm like, I don't know you what cost you want me to do. By then, um, this thing, what is that? It's called for me. So the past was so legit, then what? Swaswa. 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 No, it's Swaswa, the one that means like Swaswa. Social sciences. <laughs> so I said, what should I do? She's like, no money. Social sciences, you should do OK. Then you're going to apply, 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 you're going to apply
So my classes would end like at nine, ten sometimes. And I would go to, I never went to the book to class. God has blessed me with what they call a the brain. That one God has given me with one heart. I always thank God for that every single book. I never used to go with the book. I would just sit and because I knew I don't go back to hostel from class. But then I would dance till morning. Then because I'm an evening student, I would sleep the whole. <laughs> My roommate was a Kenyan. That girl loved me like a mother. She would cook for me, wash for me, remind me to eat. She leaves their food, she finds it there, you don't hang over. Then she quarrels, then she forces you. I love that girl till today. I love her. <laughs> she's like, she's older than me, but I'm like her older sister. I want her to be okay. She calls me from Kenya, something is wrong, I would make sure I fix it. Mm. I don't care how much it will cost me. I, because there was a time she was a pony in God's movement. Mm. She had to. I was in hostel. She could have as well been, God should have given me or Santa could have given me a roommate who's as equally drunk at like a what? Mm. But give me this other girl who doesn't even drink. <laughs> then I would tell her, oh, so you can't you drink? I would even buy for her. You're local. You're what? No. <laughs> okay, bring her and I sit and chill. Then she would spit and throw up and eat. And I'm like, look at you for your fake. I drank her to club one day. I never went back. <laughs> And then I would come back and she would keep on doing all these nice things for me. I told her this room is too small, I want a self-contained room. She's like, no, the other rooms are expensive. But she had to move with me because I was living in the room. The girl moved with me to a bigger room. Mm. I said, what's wrong with this girl? But it's now that I know God knew. We live by the trust me, angels live among the stars. Mm. Like she said, never take anyone for granted. Mm. I almost missed the paper because at that time we had the same paper. Now she left before I woke up. <laughs> but here God speaks to another person who was in class and she realizes they are doing political science. Where is glory? That girl had to jump on paper to my hostel. I went to a paper without brushing my teeth or washing my face. But everybody wondered, how does she pass? Mm. It's all that right now you figure that it's just God. So I made the father of my first kids. Mm. It's going to take some time, but just you will only understand it when I narrate it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it won't make sense. He meets me at a baza. He was older, he had come over to a friend, whatever crap it was. So I also get into the bazaar, there's a friend selling sausages, and the sausages, that is a gigi. So I'm like, this is food. Who doesn't want to eat food? Because I don't want to be that high papa. So I tell her, put them on a plate, and I start forcing people to buy sausages. Aren't you hungry? Yes, eat the sausages. After eating, I may tell you, you pay. It wasn't for free. <laughs> so in a joking way, the sausages. Good finish. So one of the people I forcefully made to buy a sausage was the father of my first kid. For him, he mastered one thing. I had dreadlocks. I had, I never wore makeup, but I looked thuggish. I always say thuggish. As always, I was a tomboy. So people believed I'm gay. <laughs> so for him, he marked one thing. She has dreads and she has pretty eyes. That man looked for me like he had a man. <laughs> the only thing we exchanged was the hostel. Not my name, nothing. He came to the hostel after three days, asking everybody, was that describing that girl, she has a tattoo on her leg, then she has dreadlocks and very bright eyes, and she talks like she's always high. <laughs> that was the description he had. Until one chick said, that only girl I know lives up there, lives up. And no one goes out there, she doesn't tolerate people. Mm -hmm. oh. She must be that one. <laughs> they came and knocked, I didn't open up for the whole semester. <laughs> Until one girl finds me going down the cell and she's like, please call this number, this guy has bugged me for the whole semester. So that day I was broke, but I wanted to drink. <laughs> so I called, because I wanted to go out. For him, it was like, Jesus, thank you. He ran, me I got my beer. Okay, then he got my number, and every time the kid out, the rest is his. So I get pregnant. I was raised a Catholic child. Abortion is murder. Mm. Up to today, to me, abortion is murder. Yes. There are some people who think it is a fetus, it's a baby. When I got pregnant, because my mom being my mom, it never even hit me to fear or nothing. Nothing. I never even get scared even for a minute. I just packaged myself properly and went home. Told Amia for the weekend, but my stomach pains a lot. <laughs> when she says, what are you eating? You must be eating junk or yeah, commando, but she knew my roommate. So I'm going to Sylvia. You know, my mother has a lot of people. Because my mom has hypertension, so she would tell us to eat greens, some funny mother stuff. <laughs> so my woman would do all those things. I'm going to go to Sylvia. My mother has a lot of chips. It was a rolling chicken or one day. I told her, no. 
I think I have to say a gynecologist. This stomach of yours that specifically wants to see a gynecologist, what? My men don't know. It just spends here, then here. She's a mother, she knew. But mm -hmm. she just played along. She gave me money one say that. Me, I came back with a scan and I thought I'm going to give birth in May. That was my answer. Oh, God. I, gave <laughs> <laughs> I saw the face. So I was like, Tata woman or man? Like, yeah. She stood up into her bedroom. I don't know what happened, honestly. Mm. But because my mom loves me, mm. like if you touched me right now, you would literally, she would feel it. If anything happens to me, my mom feels it. She always calls and says, oh, what did she? Like, something, just spikes her, like something is wrong with her. I, I'm so sure, I don't know, but I'm so sure she must have cried her eyes out. Mm -hmm. When she came back, me was jazzing my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Then me, I'm hungry. You know, a spoiled child. Mm. Then she'll tell the maid, no, no, it's okay. And then my breakfast changes, and me, I'm drinking porridge as I'm drinking tea. She didn't tell anyone. Mm. She tells me, mm. I go tell the guy, he goes, like, but again, you may not have a job. I'm like, nobody talked about money. Money wasn't. <laughs> me, I knew my mother was going to sort everything. She's going to make sure everything is safe. <laughs> Me as like me, the woman says she wants to see you. Like, the don't come alone, come with a brother or whatever. My friends, our brother, whoever is there, will come. So it happens, and then a kuchara also happens. Then I hear my mom is retired. So that you what? As spoiled as I was, in my spirit I knew I have disappointed her, she has nothing to fight for anymore. She was hustling, pushing so hard for my well, hypertension and now heart disease, but she's still working. You know how private fuck she was working for you, World Bank, Ministry of Finance, and you know how demanding those jobs can be okay that, for her age. Because she wanted to see me. Her plans was for like, like, my degree, master's, and go to Uganda is not for you. That was, those were always our words. Mm -hmm. And here I am showing up with this creepy story of my stomach is pain and I'm pregnant. Then I'm giving birth in May. Then there's a child. And she just saw my life. She just said, I'm retired and I'm going to the village. And I thought it was a joke. <laughs> she built that house in, I think, four months and moved up. She really relocated to the village. She left me in the house with my brother, my my, younger, my elder brother, when I follow her, to see a woman who was, who was pregnant. It's like, at Nina Bali, Kawa, no, but Sui, your mom, and Wabu, Mumu is sorting. Your elder brothers and sisters will pay for water and electricity, rent is sorted, food, I'll send something to your mom. Reality starts kicking in. Mommy has gone. It's like my mom had died. Mm -hmm. Now reality is kicking in. Eh, eh. The chick has actually. <laughs> So I moved in with a man's family, blah, blah, that's a story of another day. I, I don't talk about it a lot out of respect. I do this for my children, these things still on record. Mm -hmm. And I want my children to have, I want to protect their childhood. I want to protect their memories. I don't want them to ever have any funny memories. So we skip that fast forward. Mm -hmm. I give birth to my first son. My mom pays all the bills, all the shopping, yeah. I still got some money from my father's estates monthly. So money wasn't really an issue then. It wasn't too much, but what did I need then? It was enough. The guy gets a job there, funny, funny. That's like, man, it appears in there, man. My experiences. I can never go back to zero. <laughs> <laughs> so you be the good girl, the Christian, the, the Catholic girl. You know how the Catholic girls are raised? Mm. The Catholic girl who, whose brothers were altar boys. My mother used to handle church services in our house. Yeah, I was the Catholic girl. So you be nice, you be what your mother is paying rent, what you be nice. Nobody told me that when you're breastfeeding, you can get pregnant. Mm. Three months down the road, my baby was just three months. I started feeling funny. <laughs> now my body feels funny, like everything just wow. And I told my mom, she just told me that it's impossible. Like it is impossible. I really had you catch it so much. It's impossible. I got in a job at the surgery. By then, the surgery was a clinic before it came a hospital now. Mm. So I go in the morning and they check me, and I'm actually pregnant. And I'm like, what the fright? gets pregnant when you're breastfeeding a three months old baby. Mm. I came back home, my God, that was the beginning of what they call misery. So, mm -hmm. Jesus, everybody I knew told me to have an abortion. My mother inclusive. This is the time she told me, Madam, Ogenda Duja. I mean, a Catholic girl in me was like, mad. <laughs> and I would say my boy was so fat, so brown, a very beautiful boy. And everybody would be like, so the beauty my son had would give me comfort. 
of Kastanza area and you know that you know those little things cutting a ching gumi yeah and I would sit down I actually went they wrote me some drugs they sent me a message not on WhatsApp SMS of some drugs I can swallow because I was working in the hospital I actually went my tea break I went to the pharmacy talked to this guy I told her she was a twin she's like you're my friend you know that you don't talk a lot to people. People think you're proud, but me, I know you just like your distance. Do you know what this medicine is going to do to you? Like, yeah, I know. Like, I'm not talking about the abortion. I'm talking about the process. Then we just came to see the hospital. These are the tabs that cause contractions. It's going to ruin your womb. That it, that it, it, that it does the baby uh, contraction, you know? The pressure. So that the fetus is She's like, that and your stitches are still so new. I don't think this is going to end well. You would rather go and they extract my grief. After you said grief. I think she wanted to scare me. <laughs> then she said, before you do that, please go talk to doctor. There was a German doctor. That she like, went to her office. She's like, okay, let's do another test. Just to be sure. She did the test. She was so motherly. I told her, my baby is just too much. She's like, oh, congratulations. I'm like, don't congratulate me. This is not funny. It's like, every baby is a blessing. I'm like, ah, this one isn't a blessing. This one has come to touch me. I was so negative. Because honestly, no one had told me anything good. But this chick girl told me, I'm going to give you three advisors. One, as a doctor, this is dangerous because your stomach is going to keep bulging. You will need to monitor you closely until nine months. Then your gynecologist will advise more. Second, all over as a friend, you're going to be as hor you're going to look as ugly and horrible as it is for two years because now these kids are going to be like twins. But the last bit of it is tell yourself you can. Make mm. your choice. I still had the drugs the pharmacist had given me. I went back to the reception, sat because I was front desk. With tears in my eyes, I kept on seeing women coming in for antenatal, then the doctors, then what, then what. And me, the echo of your Christian, a Catholic girl was. I was thinking that after I murder this child, I was like, this, this sin is unforgivable. I went and threw them in the toilet, in the, ba in the basket, the bin. I went back home and didn't tell anyone. The father of my kids said, I said, what do you mean? Never said yes or no. Mm -hmm. That was always my answer. <laughs> so me, I wanted, but you could have been going in jail. They'll figure it out. I was still staying with this family, so I pushed my mom to give me money. That's how we moved out and started renting. But also a hustle, my mom, my mom fixed it. She fixed, she tried mm -hmm. what she could. Mm -hmm. She fixed it. Until she couldn't fix it anymore, but she's retired. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Gloria. I'm now, my savings, is in the menu bank, because you have a businesses, one on one. It's now pension I'm sending you check on. Mm -hmm. And you know, so I have to survive this. They have workers, they are workers, they are workers, they are workers. Everybody, you know, sometimes the business, they bring in the money, you have to, you know. I had to woman up. Mm. You for, I, I hope you're catching up the part where I gave back my first child the day I started my exams. So I couldn't go and do my exams. Because the doctors couldn't let me go. Which year exams? Third year. My last exams. Mm. So my mom applied for a dead year. Three months down the road, I'm telling her I'm pregnant. That's oh another. my God. So, yeah, I cut it down. <laughs> but you know, when you're different and when you're called, God will do anything to justify your calling. Wow. He will find a way. I battled with this man. The truth is, um, I slept in this, this man in the same bed for a year. Nothing. No one believes that story, but that's, it shows you how hard headed I can be. When I put my mind on something, I have put it there. And, and unless you bring Jesus himself to tell me about it. <laughs> it doesn't, nothing will change my mind. And I kept on telling him, I need you to leave. Because I need you to leave. I have two babies and I'm jobless. But I'm telling this man to leave as if he jumped to leave. Fast forward. I get my 50,000, I go down in the market and I sold the earrings. Each earring was 2,500. I remember. I bought earrings of 2,500 worth 50,000 shillings. I dressed up very smartly. I know my mom used to provide, so I still had my body was still small. I've just grown fat, I think, two years ago, or last year actually. I was a small person. Dressed up nicely, put on my heels, and I went to banks. 
and there's something like I told you, there's one thing God gave me is my head. My mind runs so fast. And I used to look at, I used to get the price by looking at the client. <laughs> so when purity gets the earring, your maker, you got it down. It was working. The another one would pick up it's twenty five. Remember I bought the earrings two thousand? Mm. They got finished in like three hours. I ran back, bought more. So I graduated. The were the levels were two thousand five hundred and four thousand. Now the four thousand were apparently guaranteed. So now four thousand to me I was selling sixty five thousand. I just went and 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 then because I was soy, I looked really, really young. The women never respected me. Then I would tell the guys, I would do it for cover up. So the guys like, So they would tell me, they would run back, maybe borrow money from somewhere and come back and pay like that. The business started. So it built. I made a name in banks. You go and everybody is borrowing because they're waiting for the end of month. When you come to pick your money at the end of month, you are still I'm sad. I'm speaking to a banker here. Plan better. That is wrong. But me on my side that time, I didn't care. Because me, I was making money. I grew, business grew, business grew. I had to do it once in a while. I don't have energy, you see. Seriously, I throw out the other human being. In comes another human being. This human being was all good, laughing. The money was there. Come, man. God sent man. Heaven sent. Answered prayer. I prayed didn't make anyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want you to understand that when you feel God's own, mm -hmm. sometimes it's going to answer prayers you've not made. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Tell me you don't even have to work. Chillax. Because you have you have children, relax. There is a man out who doesn't see that you have kids. It was a beautiful, we were such a beautiful, beautiful family. You would enter my gate and you smell love from the entrance. Me, I'm as rough as it comes by there. I'm this rough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the way this man loved me was abnormal. Mm -hmm. It was very abnormal. Everybody, I'm cousin now, and I'm just my mother, what you do, like, no. My love for the way she is. I wasn't working, I was a stay home wife with two maids. My job was to sit in front of the TV and flip channels, then call and start talking about someone is in office but you're jazzing him what's on TV. That's how close we were. <laughs> then Big Brother time, Jesus. They've evicted them. You've missed. You're what? You're what? Oh, yeah, I'm going to But we were that close. Five, the latest 6 p.m., that man was always gone. He used to eat lunch at home. We were that close. You said me that they woman. We'd be like, no, no, it's since the end of four. But the difference is you served it. That would always be the difference. Then he go pick the kids and he's home there. Then everybody would say, oh, because I'm controlling that, I'm going to go. I'm telling you, I'm as rough as they come. The city, yeah. But somehow, the person just crack on it. Because he has done psychology at a very high level, I think he saw something in me that um, needed to be addressed in a certain way. He understood me. When I told you people to pray, I knew where it was coming from. You have got to pray. As a wife, you have got to pray day in, day out. Don't only pray for a husband before you get him, and when you get him, you forget. You think that every prayer was answered. There are some prayers you made. That was a prayer for a husband. Now there's a prayer that keeps the husband. There's a prayer that protects the husband. A, there are different prayers. You have to keep going with the process. <laughs> then you get suspended from work. <laughs> <laughs> when do we say, when do we rest from praying? I <laughs> know. <laughs> that was she commented like, oh. How do we survive without prayer? Because we put that, as much as we live with angels, we live with demons too. Yeah. So who's gonna protect you at that time when you didn't ask for an angel and you're sitting next to a demon? Mm. 
fast forward, he gets suspended from work. Then the dog knocked at my door and I opened for him. My head in its nature, my brain, like I said, it reasons. My head never. <laughs> People think it's a, it's a disorder, but it's, it's, a, it's a high IQ thing. Everybody with that kind of IQ, their heads don't rest. It's always, the mind is always. I don't forget faces, I don't forget words, I don't forget. I quote people over and over and over. So others call it a disorder, but it's just an eye. People with some that kind of IQ have that. Even children with autism, they have that kind of yeah. IQ thing. It's just because the behavior part of them has a disorder, but they have a very, very high IQ. That's, but autism just covers it up with that behavioral disorder. So anyway, we got issues. I don't want to talk about the story where it was a very close friend of mine who went and reported that apparently we still government funds. He used to work for the government. Because we're talking about in a match, no, because I'm promoting the money. Rubbish. We're going to be talking about things. She was talking about money. I'm going to be talking about mining about the people's businesses. But how she got to know about that, she had never. I've not. I've not talked to this guy in two years. I always minded my own business. I never left home. I, I said I don't like being around people. It was me, my children, and my family. Rumors came she had from one of my sisters, all these things, then over a friend, then what? I didn't I don't even want to go there. Like I said, I protect my children a lot. It's not about the men, it's about my children. Because these things don't record. Some stories come, I used to have very bad dreams, fall off the bed, talk to myself. Weird. Then there come stories of Bakuroko getting up crap, some funny thing. Then I hated my home. Then one day I just woke up and I said I want to go. With no money on my account. But I really wanted to go. <laughs> Seriously, I wanted to go. I saw Pastor Wojingo stand at the pulpit and describe my life from that man prays for so long, you know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he can pray from 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 4. <laughs> it was lunch hour. He stopped at the pulpit at 1. We prayed, we prayed to 4. For the two hours before the prayer part of it came, he was summoned. It's like this girl had gone and sat down the pastor now. But one thing made me believe it's not her because she also equally didn't. No. No, yeah. How did he know? Mm. I just cried through the service. I went back the next day and just cried through the service. I went back the next for a whole week. <laughs> People stood up, just demons fell, so I don't But I still went anyway. <laughs> So I believe it wasn't my own doing that I was going to church. God kept dragging me there. Mm. It, until the time comes, you just keep being in the presence. I will figure it out. Then one time, I told myself, there was a guy I was dating then. Then I told guy, I told God, do one thing for me. I'm going to choose you over a man. Mm. But I want you to help me. I want you to show me. Let me choose you over a man and show me I've made the right decision. I broke up with that guy. Weekday away, I got a job. Somebody who came, my brother and my two wife, he says, my brother, you send two and travel company just contacted me like that. We got your number from your friend, blah blah blah. I thought it was a hoax. I went there and it was real. They paid me like three hundred and fifty thousand mm. for twelve hours was longer for a week. I had nothing. The other guy was paying all my bills. Remember, I was jobless. Mm. But I was tired of that life. Bills. I was like, I was like, you you can't. And me with my craziness, mm. so I'm like, when I sent you, no, <laughs> Is that the guy who used to be so loving? No, 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 no. no. The other, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't so, know when we got another, another guy. Fast forward, I left the gun. When I got that job, to me it was a sign. Mm. When I was still with my ex-husband, the very loving man, I used mm. to have girls in my house. And they would all come, we went to Gloria's house and it's such a loving home. And yet she doesn't overdo the swimming things people over. She's rough, she's loud, she's a little wire. But the way a guy don't run out. So I would be there talking to chicks. They would 
then zao 15k but my friend told me had a very huge you know, like twice this mm. so i would call my brother he gives me additional plastic chairs they would call it like a class cafe they would pay okay. so when i used to have god blessed me with the right people pastor would you became not a friend not a pastor but he became a father mm. He became a father. He taught me how to pray. The time I believed that I would go in that time of desperate, I don't know how many pastors have my number. But we were like, not church just again, man. Because we But that time, I think uh, the uh, pastor Bugebe was not yet. No. So one pastor prophesies and tells me, there is a purpose upon your life you're supposed to, something you're supposed to do for God. Mukama in nature to chaya garo mkori. Na yoi ni, oh, that's why he's the end. Me go na abaro kore mu prophesy. What are you prophesying? Cutting out me, I would look at his house. I'm like, when does this one prophesy upon himself? Why do you not know now? Then I'll go to another pastor until four pastors, four pastors who did not know themselves, said exactly the same thing. The last pastor I asked him, what am I supposed to do? He told me, now you see, man, you won't let you go to the house. I would cry. I would, nothing hurt me like being a disappointment to my mother. She had all her eggs in my basket. All of them. I want to do something different. Why you not me? I would not be a good one. Not aunties, not uncles, not friends, not cousins. You're the bad seed, the black sheep in the family. You're the bad man. That, all that bickering. Can put it on for you. Naming my children bastards, what? No, everything gave you. Can put it on for you. Because deep within me, I knew I was in a bad woman. But that was happening. And I needed to find my way out, but I didn't know how. And Pastor, so I don't know. And no man has an answer. Never be lied to. But there is a man who has your answer. Mm. Ask him to talk to me. I went back to Pastor Bujing. Was in Nasaba. See now the source of the money. We are Nasaba. I was so bad when now the woman is tired to hear. I'm a footage game. Can I watch? I was. They became personal friends. So that level. We are going to be able. So my dear, we are now friends. It was to that level. Then got the answer. Be. Nelinda ma. Now I'm going to talk about Ngambo. Obu zata nyalo kuna. Obu imolinda yobiri mu. Like, there's one thing I now wasn't made, paying attention to. My dream world is very alive. So one day the pastor, I don't even know if I'm going to be fired. 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 I had to go to Bible college. I had to learn. My Christianity is a saving one. I'm going to be fired. I'm going to be fired. I'm going to be fired. I had to learn how to interpret the Bible, interpret verses from King James, the international version, to what. Even the Bible the pastors use, I have it in my house. Because it breaks down things easily. So that we have a preaching. But you may It was a very expensive Bible. I bought that Bible, 900,000. Mm. But recently when I could afford. Mm. But before I was with my my old Bible is the one that sleeps on my bed. But it's there. Because I'm more attached to it. But the truth is, it's not my will. Until one day, a random pastor, he had gone for some fellowship, he was Nigerian, I remember, he walks, now he tapo around to. Now I'm standing where, like, let me say, I'm like, where she is. And he stands like there, and he goes back, then he comes back, like three times. Then he comes in front and turns around with her. Who is Gloria? Mm -hmm. But you know what, my money just bumped him because I used to go to overnight a lot, a lot those prayer gatherings. If it's someone in this line is called whose glory? And he tells me, your spirit has too much, too many wolves around you. Just allow me to pray for you. And I asked him for what? I was that on poor Mugumwe for what? Because like four or five times the pastor tried to push me away, they're forcing me. They never put a ratchet on me. Because something God wants to wants to tell you. He cannot tell you yourself because you have failed to listen. He wants me to tell you. And I told him, it's okay, you pray. He told me stand up. I didn't even know you were going to be younger than me, but I stood up. 
started praying, 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 everything. I was just forgetting that I was going to get out of my life. Then I was like, hey, friend, he told me one thing. One day you're going to remember that you were not an answered prayer to your mother. You were an answered oh. prayer to the world. Now, what did you think? I didn't get a I got a stitch in your stomach. Now I was feeling it here. Now I had the arm, the local, but they know what. The funny thing here. Then he told me, don't fight it. Sit down, be at peace. From today on, you will never be heavy like it ever again. Then to me, that out here and get a cause zero, and you know, dear man, yeah, but I'm particularly sure about the new bound of the two. Do you not be heavy like it? I don't know why. I don't know why I was crying. I was thrown out of that house, I did leave. I got stranded in the middle of the road at, at 11 p.m. No, I said, Yawaka pick up when you come over and get Pukamotoka. Don't ask me about the children. Why I've told you I'm skipping lots of things because mm. I'm taking a lot of time. Mm. I've given away the kids. Mm. Because this is the time where I tell when I see women opening their mouths about women who leave children behind, I'm like, You don't know what they're going through, just shut up. Mm. Mm. That time I did what any mother, the best decision was to give those children up. You're hanging on to children you cannot look after mm. because you want to be a mother. You're not being a mother, you're becoming an enemy to them. Mm. You're not doing them any good service. So I was by myself. Because the one did the city day express me. And of course you get the memories of your mother, 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 it reminds you these things so that you feel bad. But God was faithful. Amen. I stuck in Christ since then. Nasaba. Sit down. I'm, ever since I gave my life to Christ and that man prayed and said that word, you know that answer to your mother. Your mother is a vessel. That's why me I call children individuals. Mm. We're just vessels. You want an answer to the world. That thing has never left my mind. And I've seen God do it. I have seen God do it. Not only in Uganda. People fly from Nigeria, from Cameroon, from the US, from the UK. Gaza Kutula Masoka Gloria with my dirty laundry. If it's not for God moving chips. It's a I've never felt bad about the past. I can buy the way if anybody asks me, can you go back to your past? I will go there four times because I know the big way. To me, it's not about the process, it's about the blessing. How did I know my katamote here? The me I realized that bad day was so many. Now it was time for me to graduate. And how do I graduate? Sitting there with a friend who tells me, eh, we have a rotary meeting. It's our turn to, to our body group supposed to host someone to speak. This girl's when we talk about sex. Oh, who's going to talk about I'm like, I will come. <laughs> like, huh? I'll come. What do you do? I'm a sex therapist. How? Because there's one thing I know is I read. I read. I went home, Google sex therapists. Because we From sex to dysfunctions to what in one night. I did research in one night because the next day. I stood in front of Rotarians. I have seven certificates from different Rotary groups. That was in 2015. How did they boost me? From this Rotary club, yeah, it's funny. I went there, my short skirt and leggings, and I was on another level anyway. <laughs> they were still working through me. Another club, because they get visitors in Rotary, go back to their club, and I was all over. Wow. Then I said, but the Bible told me to, because the scriptures say, I have to tithe. Now, how am I going to tithe in a sin, a sin? God make this profitable. God made it profitable. How? I started charging 10,000. Sex therapy. 20. And the women said, this is a gazette. Fast forward. <coughs> Fast forward. 
a friend calls me, like I said, we live among strangers. She just mm -hmm. calls me and she says, Gloria, there is this show on TV called Obama and Susan Mutia. About what? From Casta China, about guests. Mokobi, because the Mokazi had never watched the program, I saw upon the living room. I mean, the final Casoma would be either a show, you cook my sons and goes on, but I'm off to the office. But no, I don't know what you have. Give me the number, Sigina. So I'm like, ah, media, have a few for media. Called someone, let me give you the number. I call for it today. She told me, no, the girls, call me tomorrow at midday. Now, that was show. Called her the next day for the morning, she told me, show up tomorrow on Thursday. Just like that. Oh. No one prepped me to stand in front of the camera. No one mm. prepped me. I did all my first six courses online. Online. That's why I feel, I feel bad when I see a woman saying Busasoma, Chokvandimwa, Busasoma because of this. I'm wondering, people go to school and have degrees, but when you hear them speak, they annoy. Sure. They say I have a bachelor's in here, I don't know what, they can't even count money. They can't even balance books. But you say, Mumkaz in Atari Nyangapona Musomiro. Nengo Mwa was sending that she has a good, you know, a good eye, you know, for counting and everything. One thing led to another, then it was radio. <coughs> then I start writing my books. Everybody's going to wonder, why don't you say the books? Because I do things at my pace. They are out there. I followed the word. I am not a gift to my mother. I am a gift to the world. You will be surprised my biggest clients are not your mm -hmm. But how did I know my purpose? God spoke through men of God. Mm -hmm. Until he spoke to me at the prayer mountain. Somehow I'm like, I'm sleeping. <laughs> and I feel somebody called me. I'm in my sleeping bag. And I wake up and I go back. And I have a very weird dream. Many a man about to leave a kid is about to leave a new business. I'm going to see Banga, Octagera, or Kuluko Yolevo. As you mama assuming I'm telling you, I believe Octagera, or Kuluko Yolevo. I have a dream, and there is a man standing. You see, just see the structure of the man, but you can't see his face. And there are candles, candles. Some of them are too bright, some of them are dim, but light on the side. Kept on saying, Come to me. Just come. Just come. Come, come. I'm like, but you're too far. No, keep walking. Come. And I walked, and I walked, and I walked, and I walked. Then I'm going to sit and Mom, go ahead. And he said, Fine. No, you've walked enough. I'll walk away. They were bad. They were gala. Katikanzi. Then the man comes close. As he got close, I wake up. But you have never been that happy. I realize, yes. I get another dream after four days. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not work. I shall not want. I woke up and I was speaking Psalms 23. I had never read that verse. I was like, why is it? But I don't know where the words came from. I was like, I was repeating somebody else's words. Mm. Mm. Then that voice tells me, Psalms 23 will always be part of your life. And God is going to prove man wrong and prove himself right. Mm. Loud and clear. I swear upon the living God, I've seen God move. I've not dealt with a contract and it has failed. I've not sat in front of somebody and they've said no. Even when they say no today, Obanga have after a month, they call you themselves. One thing Pastor Bujimbo taught me is Sabida <coughs> Mumidi. I pray in scripture. I pray in scripture. You promised me this. You promised me this. You promised me that why? But you promised and God has said. He's not man. After a while I've entered sent his and so and everything and everything. I'm connected. People of the throne, you can't understand. Why? 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 People are paying for your ticket. But there's one thing, through this, I answer you, my purpose. I had to ask God to guide me because I'm as mad in any idea to me. But there's one thing I learned. Process generally more than so It was upon me to either graduate when I've passed, or I rebound, or I say I've failed. But there's one thing I promised myself. When the city damukula wa wunero wa vuti woman, 
my story never ends. God has done lots of things, used me for lots of things, but may I live a humble life. You'll find me in town wearing slippers and torn jeans and a cape and a polo t-shirt with my name behind and a picture of my logo here. Then everybody would wonder, you can know your purpose only if you know God. Purity, please. What? <laughs> Tell us. <laughs> Just when you are in God, it is very, very easy for you to understand things. Even when the whole world is not understandable, you do. This is what they call a spirit of discernment. Now, like I keep telling people, and they're like, no, purity, no, 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 that's it. Like, how do you know this is your husband? For me, I think when your husband shows up, beyond doubt, you will know. Yes. You will not have a second thought, but but things like that. Mm. So for me, how I go to know my passion, there's a way you feel you're in it, it consumes you, mm. you live it, and then somehow the confirmation is God being in it. Mm. The things that will happen to you, and you know, you don't understand, you're like, no, this is God. Like, this is God. How does this happen? Now she was talking, she was talking about all that. Now I don't want to, for me to go through my whole story. <laughs> when she talks about her childhood, mine is opposite. <laughs> In every way I grew up humble, but um, you know, yes, dad very Christian and uh, church, I've never, I don't even, once I entered a club, it was recent. <laughs> mm -hmm. We had, uh, we had um, my sister's kasiki. And you know, I was, I was even looking at those lights and I'm like, what, what are these? Like, so I'm getting that's it, you know? That is how naive and that is how my whole life was. When it comes to preaching, I got born again in the senior one, like Kuru Real getting born again. Uh, we started, you know, chasing demons like in senior three. I was a head of scripture union, head prefect, what? All that, you know, for me, my life has been God, you know. When, when it comes to dreams, interpreting, the books I have read, everything has been Christian, you know. Mm. And for me, when you talk about the dreams, God seeing visions, what you feel like. <laughs> like, that's my world. I will know God will even tell me what my maid is going to tell me the following morning. And she walks into my room and I know she's going to say, I am going, and these are the words. And that happens almost all the time to me. I will never forget when we were going to do exams and I hadn't read, I'd been preaching and what. I know someone shows up in my dream and says, go read this and this and this and this and this. The paper, it's there on your table. And I wake up, I find the paper there. I had written it myself as doing PEM. And you know what? I slept again. The following day, I went to class, discussed with everyone, and it was mock exams. Everything was in that paper. And people thought, actually, they had cheated for me. And for me, I think it's normal life being with God. And it feels good when you know that man, God. You know, for me, this is it. I'm doing this. I'm putting this. Um, I'm dreaming, for example. I want to do this. If we don't do it, it is you. Together, like me, I believe God like that. I believe God like that, and things just happen. So, passion. There's a way you feel that passion. There's a way you feel like God is in need. Mm -hmm. So for me, when it comes to knowing my passion, um, like how I told you I did SCCA, I did business administration, but then I end up in, when I'm talking to people, I feel good. When someone tells me, when you come with a problem, like for me it's weight and beauty, uh, basically, 90% of my clients is weight management, but then God uses that platform mm -hmm. to tell them there's prayer, there's what people come with fibroids, with funny things, and, and I'm like, fine, I'm not a doctor, but I know we can eat healthy and change the environment, and it becomes alkaline, and you know, we'll suppress it. And I don't know what happens, but there's always a testimony, like every month, someone comes and says, oh my God, you know, I told you I haven't, I've conceived, I've been in this marriage for two years, but I've, I've mm. conceived. And you're like, it couldn't have been what I told you to do that mm. made you conceive. It must have been God. I mean, God does things 
in a way that you know I, you, you know that you cannot back off. Mm -hmm. You just know he's in this. Mm -hmm. He has given you a platform. You know, you you could be a cashier or anything, but somehow you do your things differently. Mm -hmm. You feel like you know, when you're doing that, you feel like there's a special service you're giving to people. When everyone else is taking their bribes, you can fix someone. You're like, but I don't need to take money for this. Someone doesn't have to suffer. You know, there's some kind of ministry on you. And you can always know that when you are in God's will. You're forcing because another friend has started something. You know you're doing it. I think you would know exactly. Yes, you can do many other businesses, but then there's something that God has called you to do that you feel when you stand there. I bet if she wanted to do some other things, like mm. she would prosper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it mm. may be you know different, but it's that one thing you feel like when mm. you are in it, you're actually mm. comfortable. You feel like you're covered. So that's how I know my passion, and um, yeah, and when you know. Then you're you're, you're you good to go. Know. You're good to go. When you know, you know. You know. You know. You know. Yeah. You know. Uh. I think we have reached the end yeah. <laughs> of this uh, session. Oh my god, we have to stop from here. It has been so amazing. I hope you've learned so much. Um, it ha this has been very enlightening. Uh, but you guess what? You can stay in touch with me. You can, you can keep the conversation flowing. Follow me on my Facebook page, Authentic Chat with Praise Atwine or Atwine Praise, that's my personal account. Uh, then we have uh, Instagram, Authentic